Doctors, nurses walk out on strike at Ascension, St. John in Detroit. I think that doctors, practitioners have lost so much respect. You can be telling a staffing company, hey, these conditions are dangerous for patients. And the staffing company can have the nerve and the authority to go, no, it's not. Like, how? How is that possible? So that's actually interesting. This topic that we talked about with the doctor striking, I think that's a natural segue into an article that I read. Mm -hmm. It was from the Darwinian doctor. Um, it's a post called the my evolutionary doctor. My income Darwinian. as a my income as a locum tenens physician, right? Yeah. And um, in essence. He shared the specific details on his income as a locum tenens physician working seven days a month. So urologist works only seven days a month, bringing in $400,000 a year, which um, from the outside looking in sounds pretty sweet, right? Um, he talks about kind of transitioning from being a employed urologist where he was making, I think, close to about 600000 maybe even higher than that. Mm -hmm. And then when he switched to being, yeah, he used to make around $600,000 a year as a full-time employed urologic surgeon in Southern California. So he's saying this year, working seven days a month as a locum tenens urologist, he expects to make about four hundred grand. These numbers are pre-tax, and he gives um, a behind-the-scenes discussion about what it's like, you know, quitting his job, transitioning to a locum's job. And then he talks about like what happened when he found his first locum job, then his second locum job, then his third locum jobs. And as he's going from each job, the pay is starting to increase. Mm -hmm. And then as he's not only is he is the pay starting to increase, he's getting more comfortable negotiating, negotiating. that. Listen, like I want to get more pay for more work. And, you know, once he realizes that once he even goes back and gets more pay, he's like, this work is even more. I'm mm -hmm. negotiating even more for you. That's how he was able to really optimize the amount of time that he's away. So he says that basically at locum tenens job number three, he's there for seven days. And his starting rate at this job was $2,400 for an eight-hour day mm -hmm. and then $250 overtime. So in essence, what that means is he for $2,400, he is available for eight hours a day. Mm-hmm. Anything that comes through for eight hours a day, that's rounding on patients, that's operating on patients, that's going to the ED to see patients, that is all covered for, during that first $2,400. Right. Then let's say he worked there for eight hours and he starts getting phone calls from the ED after eight hours on hour nine, hour 10, 11, 12. He's starting to pick up $250 an hour for every time that he has to be in a hospital after that. Yeah. So he's talking about like with all of that, he went back, renegotiated and got it up to $4,200 for an eight-hour day. So he went from, once again, he went from $2,400. <laughs> he was like, oh, I got those first two numbers wrong. <laughs> to $4,200 for an eight-hour day. Mm -hmm. And then for overtime, $300. Right. And for you all, you may be like, damn, like that's a big jump, which it is. That's a big jump. And he also goes in and he talks about why, you know, this actually works not only for him, but also right works hospital. for the hospital. So what he's saying also is that he was able to cut out locum tenens companies mm -hmm. and he was able to work directly with the hospital and he worked, he stayed working as a locum tenens, but what he ended up finding out is he kept more of his money and the hospital ended up paying less because they were paying him directly as opposed to paying, paying a, the, a middleman. That's right. Right. So that ended up working for him. And like, there's more details in this that we just can't talk about this. And I'll put the link in the show notes. But you can read it. Initial thoughts. What do you think? No, I mean, I think this is great, right? I mean, first of all, kudos to him for the transparency. Um, that's number one. Yo, doctors are not transparent about this. So that was really good that he did. Yeah. So kudos to him for being so transparent. Um, and two, you know, kudos to him for showing the progression, right? And not just starting at the end where he just says, well, I get paid for you $200. It's like, oh, okay. And then people think like, that's just the way it's supposed to be. And then they get their first, you know, pay rate. And it's like, oh, you get 2400 Like, But wait, 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 wait. That's like half of what this guy was talking about. Right. So I like that. And I also like the fact that he essentially talks about the, not just the progression, but the fact that 
he went back and was renegotiating renegotiating so he went back and gave a rate right because we we and we talked about this we were talking with someone um earlier about you know just kind of the locum tenens landscape and how it's so different from the employed landscape right in the employed landscape the employer says hey, this is how much I'm willing to pay you, right, to work for me. Whereas if you're a locums person, the locums doc is actually the one who's supposed to give the rate. This is how much I think that my work is worth, right? That's what it's supposed to be. be. That's the way it's supposed to be, right? Because if you have a plumber... (laughs) Who comes to your house, you're not going to be like, okay, this is what I'm going to pay you. And the plumber's to, an independent contractor. Right. He's an independent contractor. You're or, not going to Or even tell, a photographer at a wedding. Right. Exactly. You're not going to tell the photographer, this is how much I'm going to pay you. You ask, what is your rate? And so as a locum stock, we should be telling people what our rate is, not necessarily going to locum's job boards and just looking at that rate that they say that they're willing to pay and think, Oh, that's the rate that I have to take. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I I think that, yes, we enjoy working as locums. Mm-hmm. We left for a certain reason, similar to what this doctor did. Yeah. But all of the ales, like I think a lot of people also think that being a locums doc is a panacea. Right, it's not. It's not. Like there's some issues with being a locums doc. You just got to know what it is. But just truth be told just know that like you got to learn how to negotiate your own contracts Mm -hmm. you're gonna have to learn and when you work as an employee doctor the same thing right so you're gonna have to learn how to develop the confidence to say Mm -hmm. no right i need more because x y and z and you have to be able to do that confidently right so just become just saying that you're gonna become a locums is not um is not like everything's gonna get you know, cure it for you. Here's actually a very interesting thing I want to tell you about. And it, it's a, similar to this topic, but on what last week I was in the doctor's lounge. I was talking to a neurosurgeon. He's working at the hospital as a locum tenens, providing mm-hmm. care. And he is traveling from Philadelphia to this spot. He works there for about, you know, seven to 14 days, more in the seven to 10 days range. Mm-hmm. He's making a really good living. He's enjoying it. He's not, He's like a couple of years out of residency and the hospital has asked him to become an employed doc. (laughs) As they always do. Right. And he really enjoys it there. Mm -hmm. And he verbally said yes. (laughs) Right. He verbally said yes. And he admitted he's like, I'm not sure exactly why I said that. (laughs) I really enjoy it here. And they're in the process of creating the contract right now. And I don't want to do it. He needs to just say no. But I verbally said yes. That's it doesn't what he's, matter. That's what he's caught up on. And I was like, listen, just say let me after. finish. <laughs> let, but hold on. Let me finish. Let me finish. So, so that's the thing. It's like he's probably going to continue down that pathway of becoming employed, which is he said he didn't want to do. I didn't say that. He said he didn't want to do that because he thought initially he sounded okay, and then he started thinking about it, and as he's getting closer and closer and closer, he feels like he's giving up something, like he's giving up some form of leverage, some form of freedom, some Mm -hmm. form of independence for a guaranteed paycheck because he thinks that there possibly could be some instability at that that position. Mm. So he was like, man, what do I do? And I was like, man, like people pleasing on a... That's the, on that's, a tenth scale, because that's what it looked like to me. Because look, there's a reason, guys. When you sign a contract, when you're working at a hospital, the majority of places are going to have you sign like a letter of intent. That's not even the contract, right? Yeah, there's, but a le- letter of intent is not binding. I need you to follow where I'm going. Where are you going? Okay, so you sign a letter of intent, which is not binding, mm-hmm. right? But what that does is it starts the engagement, quote unquote, between you and the hospital. Yeah. They start preparing the paperwork, which is in essence going to be your contract that you're going to have to sign with them, right? Mm-hmm. But even that signature that you make right there on that letter of intent is not binding. Mm-hmm. Nothing is sealed until you sign the actual, the actual contract, yeah. the agreement. 
And I'm just sitting there trying to talk to this dude. I'm like, why are you like so caught up because you told them yes? I know why. I want to hear why. Tell me, tell me why. He's Dr. caught Renee. up because he thinks that if he says no, he will screw his chances to continue locums at that facility. Mm, explain. What do you mean by that? Because. What do you mean they, by that? So Because he's already working there as a locum. Of course he is. So, but he may think that, well, now if I say no, will they be so upset that they don't even ask me mm, back as a locum? Were you there? You must have been a fly on the wall because that's what he said. I know. I know that I'm, I am sure that that's what he said because that's what. You know, I think the normal person would think. Okay, so what would Dr. Renee do in that situation? What if First you, of all, I wouldn't have you, never said yes. Okay, but you did. That's number one. But you did. But let's say but by you mistake did. I misunderstood and I happened to yeah, say You guys yes. ever notice that Dr. Renee never does, makes any mistake? Error, every, she got the answer to everything. Everything is perfect. I would have never done this. I would have never done that. I would have never eaten the forbidden fruit. I would have never done this. I would have never done Like, come on, man. Like, everything, you, got the, like, you ain't do nothing wrong. You ain't make no mistakes. I'm flawless. Um, Damn. Anyway. So let's say you had said yes. Take it from there. So if How are you going to recover? Yes, How would you recover? Give advice I, to this person. So I would set a meeting with wh- whomever it is that I said yes to. And I would just tell them, you know. I'm not fucking like that. <laughs> <laughs> Alfred, cue it in. I'm not fucking leaving. <laughs> I'm not fucking leaving. Yo, low key, that's a great movie. Uh, Wolf of Wall Street. They're gonna have to get the national guard to get me out of there. My chest is hurting now. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Oh, my God. He's going crazy, y'all. <laughs> you finished? Quaaludes. Um, so I would set a meeting with the person to whom I said yes. And I would just sit down and say, hey, you know, I've been thinking about, you know, weighing the pros and cons of doing locums and doing uh, employed work. And after considering everything, I think actually being a locums, I think you would actually get the best out of me. Mm. And that's where you got to see. That's what I'm telling you. That's what I'm saying. What's it going to be? Sometimes you just got to pop up on these. So you got to just tell them what? (laughs) Tell him what? Tell him what? It just, <laughs> so you're going to get the best out of me if I stay as an independent contractor yes. because I'm going to be happy. Yeah. And you want a happy Dr. Nee. You want a happy neurosurgeon to come in and just be like, you know what? When I come in and I work, I get paid commensurate to what I do. I'm excited. I'm already giving you two weeks, maybe even more. Why are you trying to mess that up? You don't want an unhappy neurosurgeon coming in. So that's what I would say. You say it like that? Not like that. But essentially, that's what I would say is that, you know, you're going to get the best out of me um, being a locum tenens. You know, I ch- I chose to be a locum tenens for, you know, for specific reasons. And I've really enjoyed my time working here. I love working here with, you know, with all of my colleagues and the nurses and everybody. And I think it makes for a really good dynamic and it will allow me to do the best work that I possibly can. Um, so I'm, you know, I, I'd like to just kind of continue as a locum tenens doc, um, but doc rather than... But Doc, we can give you that freedom to do what you need to do. We know that you have other things that you want to do and so forth. Like you give us the schedule, but all we need is like 14 days a month and you will have you know, the rest of the time to do whatever you need to do. You don't even have to do it consistently. Like, we will work with your schedule. You know, it just seems like it works better for us um, and for you. You get all the benefits. Your kids get, you know, all of this loan. Excuse me. Oh, what I threw, they were going to do loan repayback. Mm -hmm. They don't know. He didn't know exactly how much it was going to be, but there's going to be loan repayback. There's going to be the benefits that you're going to get, health insurance, all these different things. Doc, come on. 
Talk I, to me. I understand Here, that. Here's the contract. Yeah, I <laughs> I don't want no contract. Um, I understand that, but there are more reasons than the ones that you mentioned. Oh yeah, that like, are what's, more what are the personal. Other that are more personal reasons. Oh, can you tell us? Then I'm gonna ask you if you could tell. No, that are more personal reasons that I chose I to do locums. No. That they're just more personal reasons that I chose to do locums. And there really isn't necessarily an offer that you could make me for those specific personal reasons, right? These are things that are really out of the hands of what a hospital administrator could offer in a contract or an agreement. And so, like I said, I think you would get the best out of me. Um, there are other obligations, yes, that I have to my family. Um, and I just need that freedom. No, I, I need, I need that flexibility, not just at work, but I need that flexibility at home as well. And so there are just things again, that are not going to be able to be covered in a contract. And before, before the relationship becomes contentious, because you are going to have expectations of me. And if I can't meet those expectations because of these other things that I have, then the relationship is going to be contentious. And it's not contentious right now. But, it's a very good relationship. But employees, and I'd like to keep it that way. But employees get a 5% discount at the cafeteria. <laughs> <laughs> well, then sign me up. So should we cancel? Because we have the realtor <laughs> waiting outside to show you the neighborhood. <laughs> All right, guys. I'm joking around. But listen. What she just said, that is a master class in how to literally say what's important to you, stand your ground, and just repeat despite what they have to say, even though they're going to throw in more things to sweeten the pot and so forth. If you really feel the way how that neurosurgeon felt, which is, I said yes initially, but yo, like, I just don't want to do it. I just don't feel like doing it. Mm -hmm. Like, you got to follow what's in here, and you got to be able to articulate that in a way, because I think when you articulate it that way, they're going to be disappointed. Just know, just trust. Right. Trust. And that, that, they're going to be would disappointed. Be the first thing. So before we go on, right, this is from Chris Voss of Never Split the Difference. One of yeah, the things that not he sponsoring says, the show. he's not sponsoring the show, but he gets great advice. You've got to read this book. Mm -hmm. Right. It's about negotiations. But one of the first things, actually, that I skipped that you actually should say first is before you say anything else. At all. The first thing that you say is, you're not going to be happy with what I have to tell you. That way it prepares the person to know, okay, I feel you're like about I've heard to give this from me, you multiple times. You're going to give me bad news. Have you tried that technique on me? So you just want to say, you're not going to be happy about what What's I have to tonight? tell you. What's for dinner tonight? You're not going to be happy about what I have to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so that that's actually the first thing you should say before you do that. And then you just say the Why? thing. Why is that? Why do you say that? Because what's, what's people the whole need, point of that? People, so people need a preparation, right? Mm. So you don't want to you don't want to say it when you're setting the meeting mm. necessarily, right? But you do want to say it at the outset of the meeting. And doesn't that kind of doesn't that help you also? Because then you're like, okay, I got it out of the I way. I already got it out of the way. Let me just Without start. actually saying the thing. Right. I got it out of the way that I'm about to deliver bad news. So that's the first thing. Um, you don't want to deliver this news over email. That is that is not the way. Okay. <laughs> I'll be doing that. That know. is not the way. Why not? Why can't you do it over email? Come on now. Um, it's very impersonal. Um, people need to feel like... I can't they front you. You be chance. doing that stuff. In, in, like, I just, I got to do it over email, but <laughs> I got to learn to do it over. People need to feel like they had a Did chance. Did we break up over email? No, me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> people need to feel like they got a chance to be able to say yeah. the piece. <laughs> you sure we didn't break question. up over email? No, we've never broken up over email, me. I could have swore I broke up with you over email. You've never broken up with me. If you, if you broke up with me over email... This would not be a I thing. think I use Grammarly. Okay. <laughs> Grammarly.com. I was like, I hovered over it. I was like, wait, is this sound right? Is this preposition okay here? Anywho. <laughs> am I, assertive, you am I assertive enough? But keep um, going. I'm sorry. It's kind of like a letter, right? When you get a rejection letter from like the college that you really want to go to. You really I want them to call you? I regret to inform you. 
<laughs> what you know you don't need to read the rest of the letter. First of all, the fact I'll that it's just one page. To inform you. It's one page. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Right. Uh, but yeah, you still don't want to do it over a letter. <laughs> okay, all right, keep it moving, keep it moving. But yeah, no, I, but that's the only thing I was going to say is that you want to say, hey, I have, you are not going to be happy about what I have to say. Verbatim, you could just say that. You're not going to be happy with, about what I have to say, but I'm going to have to decline the offer to be employed. And then you go on, you know, I think you just get the best out of me as a locum doc, it's been going really, really well. Um, I've enjoyed my time here. I'd like to continue on, but I have some other obligations that really just cannot be covered in an employee contract. Do, do you address that you said yes first? No. You just say <laughs> say the thing. Just say it. Just say the thing. Yeah. Because and, ultimately and you, and you, the answer and you is bring, no. And you bring up the meeting. Like, you don't wait till the contract comes no, up. No, you so don't. For example, don't like, do that. Don't do that. Don't wait until they bring the contract to you. Why? Because they've had their lawyers potentially looking at things, right? They've kind of oh, talked. Damn well, they gave they, you. It came from that. Yeah, it was a standard that, contract. That, 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 that PDF sure. from four years ago. I'm sure it is. Um, but you don't know <laughs> what other things that they've had in play, mm -hmm. right? So you just. Especially you know, with what they were saying that with student loan debt, they might be trying Right. They might actually things. be doing something. They may give you like 5%. Yeah, whatever. whatever. But. Um, but yeah, I would not, I, I would just say the thing and make the conversation about that. Because okay. if you start with, well, I know I say yes at first. It's like, well, then you still thinking about yes. Just say no. The answer is no. All right. To the, to the neurosurgeon, to the neurosurgeon who's listening to what I said, then don't listen to what I said. Cause just listen to what she said. Cause I told them to like, like go to Fiverr and get someone to write the letter for them and shit. And you did you know, not say that. Send it by certified you mail. You did not do that, Nate. Stop. And just make sure. Why do you always and make do sure that? To... The fact that you can just tell a story that isn't true so freely makes me very nervous. About what? Just nervous. Very nervous. I don't know. Oh, I don't know who the f did I marry. <laughs> Listen. That's going to be the next series, part three, because I guess there was a lady who did part Listen, two. And this is eight not years. Like part two. This is into. Uh, I got to fake. Speaking of this eight potting, years. man, what's up, with this mic? Ten years. what's up with this mic thing? I'm talking about eight years into potting. You would think that I know how to be like spontaneous on the fly. So, okay. you know, that's part of that issue is that well, I know how to be you, spontaneous. Okay. And I'm just telling that neurosurgeon that don't listen to what I told you. All right. What listen to the concept. What did listen you to the concept, which is follow your heart. And if you don't want to sign what that contract, him, I told him to write a letter and stuff. You did not tell him to write a letter. No, I didn't tell him to write a letter. Um, but I do think that you should have that meeting up front with them. Yeah. What if they like, what if they hem and haw and they stammer? Should they practice this in front of like a mirror and yeah, stuff like that? Yeah, maybe practice it with somebody and just, you know, have the words that you're, have the first couple of sentences. Yeah, my name is Nee. And listen, um, I just don't, you know, want to take this job because it's just not going to work for me. You know, shit, let me do it again. Yeah, basically like that. <laughs> I would say have the first three, two or three sentences. Oh, so the first sentence being, You've heard you're it, you not going verbatim? to be happy yeah. about what I have to say. Second sentence, I'm going to have to decline the offer to become an employee. The third sentence, there are just some things, some personal things that I have to really take care of that unfortunately a employment contract is not going to be able to cover i really enjoy working here i'd like to keep it that way and you know we have a great relationship right now and i appreciate everything that you've offered um but at this time it's just not going to work for me great advice great advice so one of the things in this article that i think you guys should pay attention it says employees cost more than their paycheck right he says they i do i want to point out very one very important point and point in regards to income mm -hmm. if you're employed your annual income only reflects part of your whole p compensation package yep. as an employee a lot of your pay never hits your bank account yep. it comes in a form of benefits like 401k match a pension health and insur health insurance coverage life insurance etc while these figures CME. while these figures vary wildly by employee you can roughly calculate your benefits your employer you can roughly calculate that your benefits are costing your employer an additional 20 mm -hmm. to 40 percent on top of your base pay. So if we think about my 600,000 of, of yeah. income as an employed urologist back in Southern California, that might be more equivalent to a total compensation package of 750 mm -hmm. stacks to 850 stacks. The same thing is true for locum tenens work, but much to a lesser extent. 
right? As a lo- locum tenens, I'm reimbursed for whatever I spend on transportation and lodging. For me, this means they'll pay my rental car, air ticket, and hotel room. This ticket typically comes to about two grand for every seven days straight stretch. They also cover my medical malpractice. Yeah, you can't really. They, so he's saying that he can't really project what the medical malpractice costs him because they do it essentially in a plan with right. all of the doctors. So there's like so a group it's plan. It's just a fraction, right? That's just a small fraction of what they pay for everybody. Um, including those who are in, employed by. The so basically, employer. what he's basically what he's saying is he he costs the hospital how much his time is worth. Yep. Right, which is coming out Interest to about four hundred, and then he's coming about two thousand. So basically, about nine thousand dollars. Well, two thousand dollars every month for transportation and lodging, and then seven thousand dollars annual, which is way under the 20 to 40% markup mm-hmm. that you get on your own annual salary if you're employed. So, right. yo, I, you know, I, I think just to wrap this up, you know, because we had a conversation with someone earlier in, in, in this today and we were talking about why more people are going into locums mm-hmm. when, when you're in residency, more than likely your academic attending is going to tell you don't do locums. Right. The majority of people who are going into locums are looking because they're trying to get like they're trying to get control of their life back. They're trying to get control of their schedule, Mm -hmm. how much they get paid. And they just feel like if they're going to put in this amount of work, then at the end, you know, they should have some control. You should have some control. And I think that scares a lot of folks is being employed nowadays Mm -hmm. and not feeling like you are in control of your schedule or having to ask. Uh, you know, we've talked about this, you know, and I think that that is something that I think a lot of residencies, particularly the attendings, the program directors, they're going to have to get, you know, knowledge on locums Mm -hmm. and be able to give some really good advice on this. Because I feel like if you just give a blanket statement of you don't want to do locums, it's not good for your career. That's actually bad advice. Right. It's actually bad. If you're listening to this podcast right now and you have your program director or anybody who's who's in your program and they're telling you just blanketed like you are if you're considering locums that it's a bad idea because it's bad for your career they don't know what they're talking about right. because that's absolutely wrong i can understand if they sat down with you and they gave you like hey i did locums back in the day and this is what happened to me mm-hmm. even then that's you know i wouldn't say <laughs> it, it's just because they had a certain experience doesn't mean that you're gonna have exactly that experience but just the same one. way but they the tell landscape you, but just the same changed. way if they tell you listen you shouldn't need to go get this academic job at this other spot you can go there and have a terrible experience exactly you know how many people right now are writing articles about how they left their academic position because you know uh, responsibility on top of responsibility mm-hmm. on top of responsibility you're not getting paid more and you're taking charts home with you like you know Publish just your parish just in general like I just don't see why you would want to turn somebody off from being able to kind of start something on their own, mm-hmm. right? And I think just saying it's bad advice, or excuse me, just saying that it's, you know, this is bad for your career, I, I just think that that's the wrong approach. Mm-hmm. And I think you're doing a disservice to somebody who's fresh out. Right. You can at least say, hey, I know somebody who does locums or, you yeah. know, maybe consider it and exactly. see what happens. Exactly. You can always come in and come out. That's the way I look exactly. at it. Exactly. So. I mean, I think, I think, you know, em- employment is not a bad thing. Um, it can work, you know, depending on your situation. And locums is not a bad thing. It can work depending on your situation. But you have to just, you have to be able to figure out where you want to land. Yeah. I think um, I think for us, you know, Meek, we're now 12 years in, right? So 12 years ago when I finished fellowship, I went straight to doing locums. Mm-hmm. And I found myself working a lot. But I was really happy because I was able to make my schedule, you know, move around things that were really important for me. Like if my nephew had something to do at his Mm -hmm. elementary school, I was always able to be there for that. If my parents had doctor's appointments, I remember my dad got diagnosed with prostate Mm -hmm. cancer and I basically made it to all of his appointments. I made it to, you know, all of his radiation treatments. Mm -hmm. I was there for my parents. You know, I remember giving them my old, you know, Volkswagen Jetta, Mm -hmm. you know, because I was renting cars all the time, you know, but it just worked out for me. But I was on the road a lot. Yeah. And then we traded that in like within a year and a half to be employed. And within the first couple of months, I was like, ah, clinically, I like what I'm doing. But there's a certain level of control. I feel like I forfeited that Mm -hmm. I don't like. Right. And it took me three years to just be like, you know what? I'm not resigning. Yeah, we kind of knew going in that we. Said, yeah, we already yeah. knew we weren't going to be there. Yeah. You know, <laughs> but I think in general, even if it was in another spot, like it could have been yeah. in Miami, it could have been in New York, it could have been in wherever it would have been. I probably would have been like, 
yeah. no. Right. As an employed doc. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying that that's the answer for everybody. I'm just saying that if you have that itch, if you feel like, hey, locums is the spot for me, just know that there's a large amount of people who are shifting to that at area or who are thriving in there mm-hmm. and they are having an amazing time so don't feel like you're gonna be by yourself doing it yeah. just because you're you know if the folks at your residency don't support that that's yeah. all i gotta say about that boom so maybe you know uh i'm gonna try to reach out to this uh the darwinian doctor and see if he wants to come on a show to kind of talk this and discuss this yeah and we'll go from there that'd be nice any final thoughts dr renee they're not like us they're not like us they're not like us Mm-mm-mm. they're not like us uh, uh, uh. They not like us. And we heard from the algorithms. You guys don't care about what happens at the end of the show. Alfred, wrap it up. We'll catch y'all guys on the next episode of Docs Outside the Box. Peace. Peace. They not like us. Mm-mm-mm. They not like us. <laughs> <laughs>